On the build show today, we're talking wood interiors and we're actually gonna show you some best practices from my new office. Check out this space, isn't this beautiful? We've got wood walls, I've got a hidden door at the end of this hallway, a conference room, man, this space is gorgeous. On the build show today though, we're gonna focus mainly on these wood walls, how to design them, how to fabricate them, and my master finish carpenter, Gilbert, is gonna give you some tips on best practice for install to really nail those details. Today's build show brought to you by Delta Millworks. Let's get going. Ah, you know how I love my hidden doors. I had to do one here at the office, a little pivot door at the end of this hallway. All right guys, so in the build show today, we're talking wood specifically how to design, how to fabricate, and how to execute it, how to actually install it. First up on the design side, what an incredible blessing to have Kim Lewis of Kim Lewis Designs on this. If you guys don't know Kim, she was the lead designer on Extreme Makeover Home Edition for years, and her practice is based here in Austin. What a blessing to have you on this, Kim. Thank you. Gorgeous, gorgeous design. Thank you. Now talk to me about these black wood walls right here in the kind of reception area. What's going on? Why this choice? Yes, well this is the entrance, so we wanted it to feel very dramatic and special. So I chose this Delta Millworks material because, you know, we think about the brand when we start designing and your build brand is all about bold, black, <laughs> you're always wearing black. I'm always wearing black. Right? Because so it's, it's slimming. Very rich. It's slimming. Yes, it's a very rich color and so that's what we, we chose it for the character of the, the brand design. I love it. Now talk to me about these wormholes or knot holes. What's going on with this? Yes, I love, this material is a sustainable product from Delta Millworks and it's actually beetle kill pine. So ah. a beetle has gone in and killed this wood and so it's either so going to get... So the tree get, was dead already. Exactly. It needs to get cut down. It's either going to get burned or get reused. And so I love the sustainable factor of this material and it also gives it some amazing characteristics. I love it and it's beautiful in this inky black. Now why vertical though? Normally when I think of wood, I think of shiplap and this horizontal white wood. This is very different than that. You ran it vertically. Yeah, the ceilings in here are 10 foot, so they're a little bit shorter. We ran it vertically because we want the appearance of the room to feel taller. Ah. So you use the material in the manner of which you want the room to appear. Gotcha. We wanted it to look taller, so we ran it vertically. And then Kim, you also ran this across the hidden door, which I love. Yes. Great design, by the way through the conference room, and then you transition to some other materials. Talk to me about how you selected that and what made you decide to do that in these spaces. Yeah, so this is two different areas, but we have the glass wall between, so we wanted it to appear as one. So I wanted to carry the material from an inside corner to an inside corner. You know, one rule of thumb is mm. you never end a material on an outside corner. Smart. Yeah, and so we've got it all the way across, which makes it feel like one unit. Now, I wanted a different material on the ceiling because I think ceilings are a lot of times missed, you know, just missed. Yeah, I would have just assumed, oh, same wood, of course, on the ceiling, but this looks amazing. What is that ceiling wood? This is a select cypress from Delta Millworks, and we chose a very matte, uh, simple finish on it, so it mm. keeps the raw beauty of the wood. So matte finish meaning not shiny, right? Exactly, we did not want a shiny finish. Um, and then I ran it this way through the room because we want the room, the back wall material to carry us up and across. Okay, when yeah. you're choosing materials, a lot of times, you really want to think about how they play off of each other so mm -hmm. they don't distract from one another or fight against each other. Love it. And so you run the wall up, the ceiling across. Now this material is using, it's a visual effect. It kind of feels like that waterfall effect that the exactly. designer's talking about. And then the gray wall, what's going on with that? Why not wood on that wall as well, Kim? Same principle, we've got an exposed concrete floor mm -hmm. and I wanted that wall to feel like it's further that way. Ah. And so, you know, wood is a special material. We don't need it everywhere. Right. We use it on the focal walls and right. then maybe the ceiling. And we're using it here, but in the rest of the office where we're doing accounting and, yeah. you know, the project managers making videos, that's more of sheetrock walls. Exactly. So we did a stucco concrete finish to make the planes of the floor and the wall continue together. And I like the use of three different finishes I in a room. It. You know, beautiful. A three is a good number. Good and that's just number. the three coat stucco over there with a you know steel trowel burnish on the end. Now Kim, one thing you did though is I noticed you transitioned this black beetle kill mm -hmm. to baseboards in the rest of the office to kind of tie it together. I would have never thought about that. How'd you come up with that? It was honestly sort of an organic decision. We were here talking about trim finishes with the guys uh -huh. and I had this in my hand. It's like, you know what, if we just take the groove off of this, uh -huh. this is the height of baseboard we want. This tongue 
actually acts as kind of a shadow line. Yeah, let's look at that on this piece right here that hasn't been installed yet. So the sheetrock is about a half inch thick. Mm -hmm. We've got some steel studs back here and they painted the bottom plate black. And then the finished carpenters actually added a shim on the back. We'll get into that in a minute. But this half inch thick material, three quarter inch thick material, when he rips that tongue off, or pardon me, that groove off, that's what it's going to look like when it's installed. What a great I idea, Kim. I love it. Kim. And the tongue makes the perfect little shadow line across the floor. Yeah, just black down there. And we'll leave concrete floors in most of the office. Uh, just a few places where we'll add carpet for sound deadening. Kim, amazing design. Thank you. Guys, if you don't know Kim, you need to follow her on her YouTube channel and her Instagram feed. I'll put a link uh, to both of those. And if you've got a really cool project coming up, I'll put a uh, link to her design website as well. Huge Thank thanks Matt. for your help on this. Beautiful design, Kim. It was so fun. I love it. Beautiful. Let's move on to Robbie from Delta Millworks to talk about how they fabricate the wood. Robbie, these walls look amazing. Now, Kim told us this is beetle kill pine. What does that mean? Beetle kill pine, it's out of the Rocky Mountains. It's actually dead standing lodgepole pine. I have a piece here in my hand. So this is a, a milled piece in its raw state, milled to a tongue and groove pattern. But you see the uh, bore holes from the beetle activity. And also the blue stain is a, uh, a fungus that's brought on by the beetles as well. You can see kind of the raw state right there. But with the blue, with the wormholes, with the knots, it's a pretty, uh, pretty rustic product overall. And it's gorgeous even in this state, but how do you go from this to this really inky black look that we've got on the walls here? Well, this is Shishugi Bond, Matt. We've been uh, doing Shishugi Bond for about 12 years now. Yeah, you're, all, you're known all over the nation as the Shishugi yep. Bond guys, aren't you? Yep. And if you're not familiar, that's a char process, right? So it's actually been burned with fire. Yep, a Japanese tradition of preserving the wood, make it, making it fire resistant. Um, we've taken that process and really modernized it, and we do it on various wood species to different levels, mm -hmm. different texturing techniques. Um, with this particular product, we did a light char. <clears throat> we also brushed it. So that's where you're really seeing this grain pop right here is the, yeah, the brushing that. we did. And there's no alligatoring that you think of sometimes <clears throat> with, uh, with Shugibon. I've done Shugibon with you where we had a really heavy char, heavy yep. gatoring. But this is a different type of char, right? This is a light char. We wanted to do something more durable, especially for a commercial office setting like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, people are going to be coming into contact with it. It's going to ultimately get dinged up a little bit. Um, so that's why we went with a more durable uh, Shishugi Bond finish that won't flake on us. Yeah, and what I would know, what I notice on this too, Robbie, is how incredibly uniform it is. You know, we've got grain patterns and wormholes that are different, but the finish itself, incredibly uniform, because you could do this as a backyard carpenter. I've seen guys with weed torches uh, on sawhorses trying to shishugi bond their, their woods, but you guys have really made it into a science. Impressive. Now, Thanks. you guys are based in Austin like I am, but you're shipping more than just Austin and Texas, right? We ship all over the world, Matt. We've shipped uh, material into 14 countries at this point. Um, all over the U.S., we target some of the best architects and builders here in uh, the U.S. specifically. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Guys, if you're not familiar with Delta Millworks, I'll put a link in the description. Robbie's company sponsored this video. Uh, great local Austin company, but if you're a Seattle architect or builder, a Washington, D.C. architect, they can ship an entire job's worth of this wood to you in wherever location you are. So check out their website. Next up, though, let's go talk to Gilbert on some real specific install tips on these woods. Gilbert, this is some spectacular carpentry, my friend. Very, very crisp. That's always my favorite compliment from clients. And I'm gonna pass it on to you too, my friend. Crisp work, buddy. Awesome. So awesome. talk to me about this wood wall right here. I'm noticing you've got full board on that end and of course full boards on the corner. Did that just happen to work out? How did you start the wood running on this one? It just happened to work out that we that we wound up with a full sheet over there. So my, my whole thing was that I wanted this corner to look even on both sides. Okay, so you did this corner first, We basically. started at that corner first. Now talk to me about this miter. That is one really nice miter. How do you get that so crisp? I like to run these in 46 degrees. And that's just so that the front part meets before the back part does. Okay, so when you ran on the table saw, <coughs> you're setting that saw one extra degree. One extra degree. Got it. And it, it, it just gives us a finish like that. And then whatever whatever shows from behind, we just 
We use this magic stuff right here. We call them <laughs> Minwax Putty, Wood Putty. Some awesome stuff, and it just happened to be the right color. Yeah, perfect so, black. Yeah. So you're gluing that joint too, I'm assuming, yes, right? Yes, we, we use uh, uh, tight bond, uh -huh. and we make sure we glue it, and then we put a few nails. We don't want to put go too crazy. And what it. kind of nail? That's probably not a big fat finish. It's an 18 nail, gauge. Right? 18 gauge, it's and it's only an inch and a quarter long. Gotcha. So a real small brad. So a small head that you had to wood putty. And then it looks like maybe you had to putty just the hair on that miter, but a not little much. Bit, a little bit. Very little. Because like I said, we do a 46 and the front winds up hitting before the back does. Mm -hmm. So whatever little bit we had, we just fill it in. It helps that it's rustic too. Your eyes yes, not drawn yes. so much to that. Yeah. And then I noticed that as you go down this hallway here, I can't tell whether you have a full board or not from, from this main position. Did mm -hmm. you end up on a full board there or was there a cut we, at the end? We had to create something for that door to, to kind of butt into. So we didn't wind up with the full board, but at the same time, you know, can't once tell. you get to that corner, you really can't tell because you have two boards coming together. Yeah. And uh, now tell me about that pivot though. Did you actually manufacture that door or did you, did you work one that you got from the mill shop? No, we, we built that door. We built it out of uh, 10 foot long, MDF, four foot wide. Wow. It's a heavy door. That is a heavy door. And then we wrapped it with a- Is that three full sheets of MDF? Three full together? sheets, yes. And what I did in the center is I took the middle one and I just ran 10 inches all the way around and then ran some pieces just because it was so heavy. Okay, so a couple horizontals uh -huh. in there, and there's some hollow spots in there yes. too. Yes, and just to try to get some weight off of it because we, we had to muscle it and set it there. And, I love it. And, uh, it's beautiful, it was, man. And, uh, you know where else is really shows off your craftsmanship <laughs> is that recess you made for the TV. You've got those really difficult miters where that recessed box is, and those boards are running continuous. That's really some nice work, my friend. When we started the ceiling, I thought about lining up the lines, but because it lays different it's a little bit wider so ah. we kind of and plus it's a different color so we didn't really line the lines up otherwise we could probably take a month or so trying to make that work yeah i gotcha but that that ceiling it's turned backwards now mm -hmm. uh and, and on this walls we've got full boards but on the ceiling you had to join some right we had to join them and what we did there is we did uh 30 degree angles and at every joint, we use the tight bond to kind of okay, seal. Okay, so where those joints come together, it's not a 90 degree cut. They call it a mm -hmm. scarf joint. Yes. Uh, where you cut it on this uh, saw here with a 30 degree mm -hmm. angle so that when it overlaps, you get a little meat in there. Yes. So that way, if, if something's going on, you could have room to attach them both together. Got it. Now, these boards came sealed on all sides, but mm -hmm. you've got to seal the cuts. How are you doing that and also gluing those? Well, we're sealing the end cuts with glue Got because it. if we put sealer on it, then the glue has trouble attaching. Bonding. To it. Yes. So when you're gluing it, you're actually probably having the guys use their finger and spread it out so it's all the way continuous on that joint. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. not only is that going to seal it, but it's also going to make sure that doesn't open up. And exactly. Open. Yeah, and it'll, it'll hold it tight. You know, once that glue sets, it's just going to give us a good joint. Another minor tip I noticed too, I don't know if you did this or if the HVAC guys did, but notice how the boots in there are all black. Uh -huh. uh, before the grills get installed. That's a great tip I learned early on in my career. Just a cheap can of spray paint makes that hole look like a black hole. Yeah. Did you do that or did no, the guys No, no, they was, the AC guys took care of that. Yeah, if those aren't already, you should be doing that on your jobs yeah. before the grills and registers get put on. Small little tip. It makes sense, yeah. Gilbert, let's go talk about the, the uh, kind of semi-recessed base. This is a design I've not seen before. We do mo mainly residential, right? So we're not really typically doing commercial jobs. And I briefly mentioned this when I was talking with Kim who designed this, but talk to me about a couple of these tips. So when you got these boards that were gonna be recessed base, you actually had the groove on there and you ripped it off, right? We ripped it off, yes sir. Now what's going on with this extra piece that's on here? Because this is a commercial building, we have 5H rock. So we take off this much over here, so we have to add an eighth inch to the bottom over here so that ah. once we set that on top of the rock, we only have a quarter inch showing. It, the whole Got three it. quarters doesn't show, it's just a quarter inch. And that looks like Luon plywood, right? Luon, is that all that is? Yes. Just some cheap Luon? So we just put it on there with some uh, 3M uh, spray 90. Okay, so, cement. so spray on both sides, mm -hmm. flip it over and attach it. And now it's not gonna, it's not gonna dive it's on. It's not gonna kick in. And then how are you attaching that? Because we got steel studs here. We use these guys. Uh, these uh, are finished screws, that. square head. And what we try to do is not drill them all the way in. Mm -hmm. we, we like to leave them flush with the wood. 
And that way they don't stand out. You don't see a, an extra pivot in there, an extra hole in there. That's really smart, uh, Gilbert. Yeah. And if it's black, you're not going to see it. That's mm -hmm. the small number one head you're going to yes. see. Yeah. And if you needed to run a wire or something in the future, but always take it right back pop off. it right off. Mm -hmm. And I would say we're, we're going to make sure we tell the painters, don't caulk that joint <laughs> right there, right? Because then it's yeah. going to be a real bear to, yeah. to come off. And then and because, we we use, it, we can. because we use the same material that we used on the walls, mm -hmm. it's a little bit shorter than we needed for the base. So what we did is just we just sprayed black underneath that. And so this bottom plate here, spray, you spray uh -huh. painted that black so yes. you wouldn't uh -huh. see that disappear. Yes. Really smart, Gilbert. Man, my new office <coughs> is looking killer, Gilbert. It's Love the craftsmanship, yeah. brother. Looks good really stuff. good. Good stuff. Looks my office is actually right down there, <laughs> and I've got a film studio right behind those walls there, so you'll be seeing more from this office in the future. Guys, thanks for joining us for this special build show for my new office. We talked about design, we talked about fabrication, and Gilbert gave us some great tips on install. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Check out the Delta Millworks website. They sponsor this video. Great people based here in Austin, Texas, where I am. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, go check out buildshownetwork.com. We've got a new video there every single work day. We actually have six new videos over there every single work week. Guys, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.